Metal TikTok is fucking weird, and I just wanted to come on here, run my mouth a little bit, and talk about the influence that Metal TikTok has had on modern metal and how it continues to ramp up in popularity and really provide a platform to build up a lot of these bands into what they are. And there are a couple of examples that I want to go into, the biggest being TX2, Bad Omens, and Sleep Token. And while there are other bands that you could put on this list, like Spirit Box would be up there as well, but these bands Bands in particular, or TX2, the artist, I think it's kind of cool and also weird and also scary that YouTube Shorts and TikToks have become so powerful that they can instantly give people a bigger platform than they had prior, just overnight seemingly. Because I remember when Bad Omens started off as a fairly small band that was getting their upstart on Sumerian Records and people were comparing them to Bring Me the Horizon, now they're literally touring with Bring Me the Horizon. Like, oh my god. Or the fact that people have this weird like parasocial relationship with like Noah from Bad Omens or Vessel from Sleep Token or Courtney LaPlante from Spirit Box where I have seen the most inhumane and downright simpy behavior towards her, I'm just gonna be honest. Which I understand, like she's very pretty, she's very talented, but god, y'all need to keep a fucking leash on yourselves. And in the case of TX2, which I did a whole video about recently, y'all can go check that out if you want. I'm, I'm really proud of how that video came out. He can continuously post things on like YouTube shorts and TikToks and become like an overnight sensation that becomes one of the voices and figureheads of an entire genre of music and get praised by the hundreds of thousands solely from just appearing seemingly overnight and completely dominating the entire YouTube short and TikTok thing like you can't even go anywhere without seeing them. And then outside of bands you see this popular thing that's starting up of like someone just standing in the middle of the screen like barely dancing or just like looking really disgruntled and stuff and it's like only true metalheads know this song. How many of you got it? It's, it's usually women in skimpy clothing. I'm just gonna be completely honest here with you guys. It, it gets clicks because tits are out, I promise. And then you'll proceed to get played like the most basic, bare minimum metal songs to ever exist that have like 500 million to 1 billion plays on Spotify alone, like in succession with each other with no challenge. Metalheads like to think that we're pretty underground, but y'all are tripping if you think that metal hasn't gotten a lot more popular in recent memory. I mean, Knock Loose played fucking Coachella. You're seeing Lorna Shore get talked about by like opera singers and vocal coaches on YouTube every other day. Like this isn't some underground true cult thing anymore. Black metal is starting to come into TikTok where I'm seeing more and more people doing like corpse pain and making like memes about black metal and stuff. And while these things always existed, it was never to this effect in terms of notoriety, publicity, and being able to turn these bands into overnight successes or take a pre-existing platform and skyrocket it bigger than they ever could have imagined. Where now it genuinely seems like it is more of like a statement and quote unquote easier to blow up on YouTube shorts or TikTok than it is to traditionally release something on like Bandcamp or YouTube or something and organically get something started. Y'all have not fucking lived until you have seen someone make a thirst trap fan cam of Noah from Bad Omen or Vessel from Sleep Token. These people are thirsty. They are diabolical and they will endlessly attempt to simp for these fucking men and women that they don't even know. And in turn, it gets a lot of people into metal. Like, I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. It's a, it's a gateway for a lot of these people because not everyone is gonna be in the spaces that c are conducive for metal or expose you to metal. So if these younger people are on TikTok and YouTube Shorts and they see these people pop up on their timeline, I don't really think it's necessarily as cringy as people let on because who's to say that them checking out that material isn't going to lead them down a path to enjoy other music, to get into other metal. I think that's a wonderful thing and can never be a bad thing. I'm not for gatekeeping. Don't, don't misinterpret this video as me being some purest gatekeeper. I think it's fun. I take in a lot of TikTok and YouTube shorts metal shit. But with that being said, a lot of it is pretty talentless. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but I think a lot of YouTubers 
have kind of profited and a lot of TikTokers have kind of profited and blown up off of doing like the bare minimum. And once again, I'm not trying to come off sexist because I, you know that I've made like a shit ton of videos about sexism and metal. I'm just talking objectively. One of the uh, more popular things as well is when there is like a scantily clad woman playing the guitar pretty fucking shittily to a really popular metal song, sometimes literally not even playing the correct notes. And then you'll see like 500,000 likes and 5 million plays and it's like, you go slay Versace boots the house down, my queen. And it's all in good fun, like if people are having fun doing it and if they're getting like notoriety and publicity off of it, more power to them. I think it's funny, but there is an entire genre on TikTok of just YouTube cringe. Nick Nocturnal does a lot of videos about it and I absolutely see why and I condone that. Because if you're gonna put yourself out there, be ready to be laughed at. Because <laughs> there is the other side of that with a lot of like metalheads that actually take the genre kind of seriously and laugh at some of the weird takes that people have. Because obviously if it's easy to blow up, you're going to get a lot of half-baked takes, weird opinions, and people who are completely wrong about a variety of things. Not that there necessarily is a wrong or right way to enjoy a lot of stuff in terms of metal, but there definitely is some objective truths and untruths. And I'm not going to lie and say that on YouTube shorts and TikTok, that line doesn't kind of blur sometimes. But I do think it's important because it's turning so many people on to metal that wouldn't have otherwise heard it. And like I said, I don't think that's a bad thing. I always think that you need to have digestible and comprehensible gateways into metal because you can't assume that these younger people or people that aren't interested in metal usually are going to suddenly get into metal by listening to fucking Waking the Cadaver or Abominable Putridity. The way that bands like Knock Loose can be loved by quote-unquote posers and normies and play Coachella and Lauren Ashore can get to the amount of acclaim they can or Sleep Token, Bad Omens, and Spirit Box can get astronomical success both in metal but also transcend the genre is because things like this exist and whether or not it's cringy or not or something that you just scoff at or roll your eyes at you can't deny that it is important to have these outlets and to have these platforms online because these are the ways that new generations are going to get in to metal, going to be exposed to metal, and I can't think of one solid rationale why that would ever be a bad thing. What are your guys' opinions of YouTube shorts and TikTok in terms of like the metal and rock community? You can let me know down in the comment section below. I can't wait to hear your opinion on this. Don't worry, I won't judge you if you laugh at them. I laugh at a lot of them too, unfortunately. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to join the review family today, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know what it is, my name is Jim Morris, and I'm signing off saying fair well.